Hi there. Today we're going to cover how to string beads onto a flexible beading wire and how to use crimps to attach a clasp. Uh, this is one of the classes that I always recommend starting out with. Once you can do this, you have all sorts of new skills that you can try out. Today we're going to use the toggle class, a two by two crimp, medium soft flex, the round jump ring, some oval jump ring, and four millimeter crimp covers. We are using these tools, the bead buddy, the flex wire cutters. They're made specifically for cutting the soft flex, the square end pliers and the needle nose pliers. So we're going to start out with our medium soft flex. We will start by using a two by two crimp. Uh, when this is flat crimped, you will end up with a two millimeter by two millimeter square. So that is why it's called a two by two. At this point, I will also say that the two by two crimps are the middle of the road. You can use them on the fine, the medium, and the heavy soft flex. So we will take the wire. We are going to thread it through the hole in the toggle. We already have the crimp tube in place. And we're going to take the wire and thread it back through the crimp tube. And one of the things I will tell you is that the wire immediately wants to cross. It wants to do this. If you leave it like this and flat crimp it, you wouldn't have a very secure clasp. So what you're looking to do is to get the two wires and have them so that they sit parallel one on top of the other. You're going to slide the crimp closer to the clasp and you want to make sure that you have enough room for your clasp to move around. If I had it all the way to the end, it would be very tight on there. So let's pull it back just a little. I'm going to straighten those wires again. And with the needle nose pliers, I am going to put it about the middle of the jaw so that I get good contact and just give it a firm squeeze. Pull away and you'll see you now have a two by two crimp. So at this stage, we're going to trim off the excess wire. I tend to wrap the wire around so it's out of the way. You want to be careful that you don't trim the wrong wire, otherwise you start again from scratch. Now with the flat side of your flex cutter, we will slide down the wire and get nice and close and trim. You could, as I say, go ahead and start threading your beads on and have this as your finished crimp. In fact, I think I will leave this one on this end. On the other end, I will show you how you cover your two by two crimp. We are going to use these pretty beads and thread them on. At this point, I will say that it is useful to have these fuzzy mats, which is what I'm beading on today, in a variety of colors, because it is very useful if you're have contrast between your beads and the surface that you're threading from. And the reason we use the fuzzy mats is they stop your beads from running all over the table. If you have a hard surface and you're trying to spread out your tools and your beads, you are going to have a challenge. So I always recommend that we have as many of these as possible and as many colors as possible and you will find that you're covered for most of your beading needs. And one of the things that we see is when people start beading, they don't want to see any wire when they attach their clasps. But uh, if you don't have any space, when you go to put your bracelet around your wrist, you'll find that the beads are sitting very rigid. They don't have room to move around your arm, which is three dimensional. So it's one of those things where you take a little time and you actually 
try and work out how much slack you need to add. So now at the other end of the bracelet, we would thread on a crimp tube. To recap, you can go directly into the clasp and back through your crimp tube. You could also crimp this into a closed jump ring. I did bring some jump rings for you to look at. This is a round jump ring. And we also have some ovals. This is the small size, the medium size. They also come in a large size. Um, before we attach the crimp, we will go ahead and add a dangle to this bracelet. And thinking maybe we'll add it to the midpoint. The different size jump rings are handy if you have larger beads, you want to have the charm drop down low enough that you're going to be able to see it. Sometimes if your beads are too big, they just will not show. So if you have a variety of sizes, you can connect several together and work out how deep it needs to be. These are smaller beads, so a small or medium one is going to work just fine. When we're undoing a jump ring, we're going to use a square end plier, which is this one, a flat end. And you can use two flat ends or a flat end and a needle nose. They both have the flat interior surface, which gives you a good grip. So either side of the break point, I'm going to hold one side stationary and twist away with the other. You do not want to unround the shape, so you don't want to twist this direction. You want to twist away or towards yourself. And then you just take your charm, thread it onto your jump ring, and we'll put this at the midpoint. So we can come around the wire. To close it back up, you will take one side of the opening and the other side and wiggle the two backwards and forwards until you can feel the metal touching. You want to make sure that your jump rings are closed, otherwise you're going to lose your charms. And this is probably a good stage to tell you about the different shapes of jump ring. They serve different purposes. The ovals, because you will see the break point where it opens, is on the side. When you close it up and hang it from a piece, it will hang from the end. This means that if this got pulled in any way, caught on something, it's less likely to come undone because the opening is on the side. With a round jump ring, that point where it closes and opens could be at any stage. So by nature, they are just a little less secure. If you're using a round jump ring and you need security, you can go up a gauge where you use a heavier gauge, which will give you a little more strength. So at this stage, we have our jump ring with charm attached, and we are going to put the clasp on the other end. The crimp tube was threaded on, and then into the clasp, and we will come back through the tube. Again, we are looking to have the wires parallel to each other and not crossing, as this will make the clasp a more, more secure attachment. At this stage, I usually put it around in a circle and see if it's got enough room in here. And let the gravity drop it down. And I am taking into account that we are going to add crimp covers to this piece, so I'll leave a little extra space in my wire for that. My needle nose pliers 
and press down firmly, giving you a two by two square here. Take my flex cutters, slide it down and trim. So now we are ready to cover the crimps with a crimp cover. This will make a circular bead and you will slide it over the top of the crimp and then use your pliers to bring the two edges together. With your crimp cover, you want to slide it over the top of your crimp. And then take your needle nose pliers and just slowly close it up. I'm using sterling silver today and this is a soft metal. So you want to just be gentle and not do too big of a movement right off the bat. So we're closing, closing. You will find that you cannot close the crimp cover completely because it tends to spring back on itself. If you find that one edge is coming over the top, then you just turn the crimp cover and push back in whichever direction you need to get a nice finish. And also a tip I will give you is the wire that's coming out of the end I tend to push in with my nail so that I can hold it and it doesn't spring. And then I'm just closing. That's probably as good as it's going to get. So there is one crimp cover. And I will show you. This is the 2x2 two two crimp, flat crimp. This is the flat crimp with a crimp cover. I think we will go ahead and put another cover on this end. They are tricky, but you want to line up and I tend to use the index finger of my left hand. I am right-handed so I think of my index finger as a mini workbench that I can stabilize things on. I'm holding the clasp out the way with one hand and my fingers are holding the beads with the other. So I have the crimp in there, I have my needle nose pliers and I'm just slowly going to tap tap until I feel that I have them lined up. Again, if I put too much pressure on one side and one edge is coming a little high, turn your bead around, work out where you need to tap and see if you can get the two coming back together nicely. There you have your crimp covers and your clasp attached.